Yes, there have been crowds of people here all day to pay their respects to those who were lost. Now this vigil here is going on for another hour. Here you can see piles of flowers and tributes that really have just grown tremendously throughout the day. This is all to honor the five cyclists that were lost this week. The vigil started at 10 a.m. with an incredible outpouring of love and support from the local cycling community. At one point, a group of cyclists rode through the vigil silently to honor those who died. Family, friends, and community members then gathered to place flowers, write down memories, and support each other. Local leaders in the cycling community spoke about the impact this has had on everyone and how they're going to move forward together. I spoke to the stepdaughter of Michael Murray, who is one of the cyclists that was killed. She tells me he started cycling about 10 years ago, and it saved his life. I feel like it's tough for, for everybody, you know. Um, this is an amazing human. Um, he had a huge impact with his faith, his, his recovery and sobriety, and um, he, he was an awesome guy. It was hard not to like him, you know. So I feel like right now we're just kind of reminiscing on, on the time that we did have with him and um, just making sure that he knows how loved he was. Many friends and colleagues of the victims were here to pay their respects. The owner of a local mobile bike repair company says he spoke to Aaron Ray, one of the victims, the night before the crash. Ray was a brand ambassador and is remembered as being a leader in the local cycling community and a top athlete. She was a dynamo. She's only about this tall. You know, I'm only 5'7", and she's probably about 5'4", but fast as all can be. Anytime we do events and we, you know, we sponsored the triathlon events out here in Vegas, she's always up on the top of the podium. She's a top finisher all the time. To help support the families of the victims, Breakaway Cycling is collecting donations. 100% of the proceeds will go to those families. To donate, you can go to LasVegasCyclistMemorial.com. Now back out here live, the vigil will be going on for about another hour if you'd like to come and pay your respects. For those that couldn't attend in person, there was a virtual vigil at 3 p.m. We're going to head out live now to Madison Kimbrough with more on what was said at that vigil. Yeah, and on to another event today, honoring the lives lost in Thursday's cyclist crash. Take a look, as you can really see, and it was held at Red Rock. Now, the vigil honoring the lives of the five Las Vegas cyclists was held at 3 this afternoon with several people tuning in to watch. They made the vigil available on Facebook Live and Zoom for people that wanted to attend but still stay safe and keep their distance during this pandemic. Several speakers, including the president of Red Rock, spoke alongside family and friends and family family members of some of the cyclists that lost their lives on Thursday. 57-year-old Tom Trier had friends and family that spoke. Most of them described Tom as someone who loved to laugh, and his wife Donna, holding back tears, thanked everyone for their support. It would mean a lot to me if you would all reach out to me and share any stories about Tom or pictures or whatever you're comfortable sharing. It will help me heal. If you leave here today with anything, please remember this. Those cyclists that are out there riding, sharing the road with you, are someone's husband, son, sister, loved one. Please think about this as you speed by them in your car. Today has been a day filled with remembrance as several gatherings went on to honor the five lives lost. As of now, we still don't know the status of the three other people injured, but we do know that they were airlifted to UMC Trauma. Now, if you're interested in contributing to the GoFundMe page that was set up for all eight cyclists, we have a link up on our website. Live in the newsroom, Madison Kimbrough, 8 News Now.